zone restriction ahead. Make sure you have the required permit to proceed. What? Environmental what? zone restriction ahead. Make sure you have the required permit to proceed. I'm Mike. And I'm Danny. And this is Petrol Revolt. Welcome back to Petrol Revolt. In this new series, we have another iconic motorcycle. This series of episodes is the Suzuki Hayabusa. Motorcycle legends normally have names. We've got the Fireblade, we've got the Goldwing, the VMAX, and the Fizzy. We've missed one legend out from that list, which can only mean one thing. The Gen 1 Hayabusa was released in 99, taking the production speed record off the Honda Blackbird. The ultimate predator, ultimate sport, Hayabusa. Suddenly, everything else looks like prey. Weighing in at 250 kilos and at around 170 horsepower, they managed to beat the production speed record. When I was young and I was at school and I was racing motorbikes, all my mates and all they knew was the Suzuki Hayabusa because it was the fastest street motorcycle. For Suzuki to take that record off Honda, that's, that's obviously the intention they want, wanted, you know, for everyone to turn around and say that that's the fastest motorcycle in the world because that's what everyone, obviously, the general public knew. Yeah, you're right. These bikes being, you know, childhood dreams poster bikes meant the fear that Loads of people bombing round at 200 mile an hour, killing themselves, causing carnage on the road, led to fears of an outright ban in Europe of these hyperbikes, causing the Japanese to form their gentlemen's agreement, limiting top speed to 185 mile an hour or 300 kilometers an hour. That meant that when that gentleman's agreement took place, technically without tampering, it was impossible to exceed that. So really the Hayabusa finished the last century and got into this one as the undisputed top speed king. I mean, the Hayabusa is known for its straight line speed, but like Suzuki have said, they wanted to make a, a bike what handled, a bike with good brakes, a bike with a, a very strong engine as we know. So it, it must have different qualities to it as well, rather than just straight line speed. Yeah, well, that's a lot to do with its often commented on bulbous bodywork. It's all a form follows function and this thing is designed to cut through the air at 185 mile an hour. So the first high booster come out in 99 and from 99 to now, we're now in 2022. The bike, it looks really futuristic, but the actual shape of the bike and everything still looks very similar to the 99 bike. Yeah, well this 2022 bike hasn't changed too much. They kept pretty much the same frame same motor, now it's at a different emissions level. They revised engine power in 2008 to 194 bhp, and then for Euro 4 it had ABS. So this is the Gen 3, which now meets Euro 5, and it's nicely disguised behind you, but what the camera can't see is those huge exhaust silencers that have got catalysts in, and before the silencer, there's a catalyst. That's another Euro crap restriction applied to this bike yeah and i think unfortunately on all standard sports bikes or hyper sports bikes like this they all come with them exhaust on and i mean they are they are bloody ugly aren't they like <laughs> you what that's the first thing you would want to take off isn't it 
unfortunately manufacturers and that have to do these things these days. Yeah, so that has meant a little bit of a power reduction in this Gen 3 boozer compared to the Gen 2. So its power is now down 188 bhp from 194. I Suzuki claim they worked on the motor a bit and compared to the Gen 2, this has got more low speed engine torque, more mid range performance. So they say it's got more power in the areas that you use it, but it is down a little bit on overall horsepower. But where this Hayabusa excels now is in its electronics package. And maybe if it's lost a few horsepower, you know, it's grown up a little bit. It doesn't care that it isn't on paper the, the most highest performing bike. It is a hyper sports bike and it's in a class of its own because we don't have any of these left anymore. So I know nowadays on sports bikes, because obviously that's, that's what I use, but this I know has got probably a better electronics package on. So, you know, they, they've got loads of different electronic aids to it. So they have the ABS, they have the, the traction control. Even though this is a very fast motorcycle and a lot of people might think that it's a frightening motorcycle, it, it can cater for kind of all sorts of riders now, can't it? Well, and then there's the hidden electronic extras that this bike has got. We've got hill hold control, launch control. Uh, the ABS automatically off the front brake lever balances the bike out with a bit of bias and puts some rear brake in. Uh, you've got an up down quick shifter with a couple of selectable modes. You've got selectable engine braking and anti wheelie, anti rear wheel lift if probably you're descending down a little bit of an incline and too much front brake and the rear wheel starts to lift. It, it's a mega, mega electronics package. It's an off-the-shelf Bosch six-axis IMU electronics package. I know Yamaha have got their own with the help from Rossi and the GP uh, development that they did. But the way Suzuki have put this electronics package on their bike, integrated it, I know call it SIRS, Suzuki Intelligent Ride System. And then you control all of those electronics by the simple switch gear on the left handlebar there. And they call it SDMS, Suzuki Drive Management System. And the way that you can toggle through each of the electronic features, set your own levels, uh, is super quick, super intuitive. And, and that's got to be the best rider selection interface on any motorcycle. I think it's a great thing as well because, you know, they haven't just got their set modes. You can make your own modes up as well. So throughout my my career and my life, I suppose, all I've seen is the Hayabusa going in, in straight line and doing straight line speed tests and stuff like that. So I've been looking around it and, you know, the brakes on it look good. The way the weight is distributed on it looks good. You know, it doesn't look... Everything seems to be quite spread out, so it looks like a very manageable and rideable bike but it does look very heavy and it looks like it should only go in a straight line as well so I think uh, yeah it'd be nice to get it out on a track and, and and see if it if it handles well as well. But we are talking 265 kilograms of bulk here uh, round a track when what are your GSXRs that you're used to 160 kilograms? Yeah something around that so it's almost it's almost 100 kilos different so Maybe if I get this on its side, I might not be able to pick it back up again, especially with how little I am. I only weigh 60 kilos, so yeah, nearly 200 kilos heavier than me. Well, you're right there. You, know, you look around this bike and it looks pretty trick and it looks like it's got more about it than just being used as a, as a hyper GT Tourer. Now, lots of people that have spoken about this bike say that you, know, you wouldn't really want to take it out on track because if you want to go on track, then there's lots of better things for it. But you look around this bike and, you know, I think it's got a bit of potential to it. That's the thing. You can never judge a book by its cover, can you? So you've, I think until we've gone and done it, then we can, uh, we can let people know what it's really like. Now, this one has got about 600 mile on the clock and it's ever so shiny. So do you think you can put it through its paces and still give it back to Mr. Suzuki in one piece? I'll give it a go, but uh, I can't promise anything. I hope you've got a good insurance <laughs> policy. <laughs>
where we take the Hayabusa with Suzuki on the Suzuki Hayabusa Festival Day. To find out more about Petrol Revolt, then please head across to our website, petrolrevolt.com.